Welcome to The Yoga Voice, a podcast by City Yoga, School of Yoga and Health. Our guests discuss how the contemporary practice of this ancient art transforms the lives of individuals and communities in the Midwest and beyond. City Yoga has been a center for the practice of yoga and yoga teacher training since opening in 2002. Join us as we explore how yoga inspires and transforms. Hello and welcome once again to The Yoga Voice. This is Dave Sims here, your host today, and I have a great conversation to share with you. As usual, we delved into the topic of yoga but this young lady, she's a yoga teacher, soul searcher, adventure traveler, social media influencer, blogger, and writer, Colleen Grady. Colleen has been teaching here at City Yoga for not, not too long. She came to us this year, and after traveling extensively abroad and studying in India and teaching internationally, she landed back here in Indianapolis, has been teaching and, and hosting workshops and sharing her experience and growth as a teacher. And she's getting ready to take off again and continue her travels. And so we had a nice conversation where we delved into what inspires her about yoga today, her yoga journey, particularly what it's like to be an international yoga teacher, so a Westerner finding yoga gigs in places like Sri Lanka. And, and she shared her passion for the practice and her continually evolving understanding of Eastern yoga and Western yoga and, and how these practices can just light a little fire within us. So I hope you all enjoy my conversation with Colleen Grady. And as always, have an awesome day. Welcome, Colleen. Namaste, everyone. <laughs> awesome. It's great to have you here today. And as usual, I try to start their conversations out with the question of what inspires you around yoga today? I think what inspires me the most around yoga is the opportunity for personal growth. I think that through yoga, there are so many different ways we can find in our body and find in our minds to continually work and show up on our mats to be better, show up in our lives to be better. And um, I think that really like fuels my fire for yoga. Awesome. Well, you know, you've been teaching here in the community for a while, particularly at City Yoga um, this year. And you definitely that, I think you inspire people and you have that, it's clear that that passion and that fire is there in your life, the way you know, you navigate the world and, um, and just the, the, the energy you bring to your teaching. So that's really, that's really cool. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> and, um, so what got you into yoga? Kind of what, what was the catalyst to bring you into yoga and how has that worked in your life? And then how does that, um, evolve and how's it evolving you know, start to finish, what's your yoga journey? Yeah, this is kind of a funny question for me. Um, so I didn't have, I think it's called like a Sam Vega. It's like your moment where you turn to yoga. But when I was really young, my mom was really good at exposing us to the world. I think that's like one way my parents were just like excellent parents is they, ex they exposed my sister and I to so much. And um, when I was 14, I went to my first yoga class and I was like, and I loved it and I kept going back. And um, since so since I was in middle school, I wanted to be a yoga teacher. Like I didn't even know that much about yoga at the time. I just felt super connected to yoga. I'd keep showing up and this was just like at the rec center, like nowhere special. And also this was 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago. And yoga wasn't that popular then mm -hmm. either. It wasn't as... Um, common as it is now but I had always felt really connected to the practice um and so I wouldn't say I've been practicing since I was 14 but like the light has always been on for me about yoga and 
I, I practiced through high school. I practiced on and off through college. And then before I graduated from college, I did my first yoga teacher training because that was a big goal for me to um, do my training before I graduated from college. Since it was already my lifelong goal to be a yoga teacher, I was like, I want to get this done before I finish my degree. And um, I did that in Costa Rica at Passion Yoga School. And then... Yeah, after, so I, I did that and I taught a little bit. I wouldn't say it was probably till a year and a half after my training did I really um, get into teaching because I just felt like I wasn't ready yet. Um, yeah, I just felt like I wasn't ready yet. I know a lot of teachers too, they have this fear of they're not enough to be a yoga teacher. Right. It takes a long time to step into that power where you feel really ready. And so I can relate to that. It took me a long time to get there, I feel like. Um so yeah, then I, I taught pretty consistently. I went through like working to be a full-time yoga teacher, but I really burnt myself out trying to do that. It was, it's a lot of energy. It's a lot of running around yeah, being here, or there. It's a lot of time in the car. And then it really just took away from my personal practice and the sacredness of yoga. Um, and so then my next step in yoga would probably be when I went to India and, yeah, that was, I, so I did my 300 hour training in India and lived in an ashram for six weeks at that time. And that really opened my eyes up to so much deeper of yoga of things that I had already believed. But then I think like there is so much of really knowing and learning and being there in India and how I, people ask me all the time, like how I found my ashram or how I found my teacher and my first yoga trainer, this is where she did her training out of. So I was kind of already in the lineage. I mm -hmm. just was going like more directly to the source um, with yoga. And so, yeah, I did that training. It was a crazy time. It, it was, um, you know, I had always streamed it so big. So this is another like to step back. Another addition is funny of how my life I felt so called to yoga. Um, my mom took us traveling a lot as children. And the place I always wanted to go the most in my life was India. Like since I was so young, like I would say even before middle school, I'm like, I really want to go to India. And it's funny because for so long, I did not realize how connected like yoga. I didn't know yoga was from India uh -huh. for years. Like, you know, that it was hard to even find a yoga community 10 years ago, especially when you're really young and like in my, the Midwest, in the Midwest, yeah. and my parents, I don't really have hippie parents. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I have, they just kind of were into any Eastern philosophy or wellness. Like that is all me. So I didn't have an outlet for that either. Um, but yeah, it's, it's funny now to look at that, how like that, my biggest dream, my biggest travel dream ever was to go like study yoga in India. And I just didn't know how connected those two things were. But as I got older, I started to see that connectivity and how cold I had felt from such a young age to go do uh -huh. these things. So it also did put a lot of pressure on my trip, I think though, because that was the biggest dream like I had ever had. And I'm like, well, now I'm doing it. Like this has been the dream for 10 years and like, here I am. Yeah. Yeah, it, it did put a lot of pressure on like that experience too, because mm -hmm. you dream so big and then you're like, wow, this is actually happening now. Yeah. And you yeah. traveled around more during that time too, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I actually went to Sri Lanka for a month first and um, I did different work with my blog and just traveled. And I, I picked to go to Sri Lanka first because... Um, when I was in college, I took a bunch of courses on Buddhism and Buddhism. Um, there's a lot of really famous Buddhist landmarks um, and practices in Sri Lanka. So I had already been kind of connected to um, going there. And I just kind of wanted to transition into India of because I hadn't been to Asia. Mm -hmm. I had traveled pretty extensively, but I hadn't been to Asia. So I thought that would be a good place to get my feet wet and try to do this by myself before I jumped into India. Okay. So I did that. And then I went back to Sri Lanka and then I taught yoga. Um, and then I just kind of experienced what it was like to be a traveling yoga teacher and what that lifestyle was like back in Sri Lanka again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's <laughs> that's what's been going on, I guess, in yoga. The closer I've been getting to the origin, um, the closer I've been getting to the source in mm -hmm. the last four years. Yeah. So the um, how did you go about getting gigs teaching internationally? I know that's something you were doing there. 
Yeah. Um, there's a, you know, I'm still figuring out the exact recipe for it all, but there is a resource called Yoga Trade, um, which they have a lot of postings all over the world of different work exchanges or um, hotels, yoga shalas, yoga studios. Trade, yeah. Yep, Yoga Trade. Um, offering different international positions. But I found... I found, I think it's better to go up to a community and show up and like start to kind of figure it out because then you figure out like what's around, like what's popular there because it is hard when you just see a posting to know what any of that's really like, you know, Uh you're only reading in the text like, oh, this sounds great. Here's some great photos, but wonder what that community is really like, Mm -hmm. which that's, that's something I, I think is hard for most people to think, oh, I'm just going to show up. Yeah. (laughs) But I think that's kind of an easier route to take to find an international yoga position. Um, I was really lucky in Sri Lanka because it was a really tight knit community of yoga teachers, yoga instructors, any type of like healers or creative people. Like we had weekly meetups and like would all have lunch together. And then um, someone would volunteer, like teach a class or a workshop and we did that every Monday and like that was so awesome to be able to like just have that time to connect and talk about whatever yoga thing whatever yoga things we wanted but also like what life was like living on the island like and it's just when you go to places like that to teach yoga too it's so much less busy it's so Mm -hmm. much a slower pace of life where here trying to get 10 yoga instructors 20 yoga instructors to meet up for lunch one day a week like I don't think that's happening gonna, yeah, yeah. you know <clears throat> but when you're in that space where the time it's so less busy and it's just less ties less responsibilities then you have a lot more time for all of the other things yeah, yeah. now were the other yoga teachers international or westerners what, what kind of flavor did that group have um I will specifically in Sri Lanka there's not a lot of American people um so I would say that there was some, there was quite a few British. I would say there's a few British people. There were Israeli people. There were some girls from South America, some people from Australia. Um, but one common tie I found, which I liked about Sri Lanka as well, is a lot of people there had trained in India since it is so close to India. Um, and I felt that is a very bonding experience um, to have with other yoga teachers because we, I mean, you are so close to India and Sri Lanka. So most people, they go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And, um, that was really nice too, that there, there was, you could witness so many people's different lineages and different ties to, um, their sacred traditions. Very cool. Yeah, Yeah. it was cool. (laughs) And then you, I think we met right when you had just gotten back from your travels, right? Yeah. 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 You you were kind of in culture shock. (laughs) I was. I was. It took a long time to get out of it, too. And it was really hard coming back to um, just to a yoga space, too, and just um seeing eastern to western yoga it was tough and i would be frustrated with things then i'm like i shouldn't be frustrated like yoga is not a place to be frustrated and um but yeah i mean it, i was definitely it was definitely a privilege to go and i think what i miss the most about just doing yoga and um other in that part of the world was it felt so sacred and people were coming together to like make it feel like a sacred practice and um make it feel I don't know. They had a really deep connection to it. I feel like and everyone there was there to have a really deep connection. And I, I miss that part of it because right. collectively it's just a different energy yeah. um, to be around. Well, and you were in countries that had, you know, cultures that were thousands of years old. And, yeah. And much like I know when I would, first did a lot of international traveling in my 20s it Mm -hmm. struck me i would maybe be in italy or some you know some country and i walk into this cathedral that was eight or nine hundred years old and there's a different energy in that space you're like you know people have come here for some type of spiritual practice for centuries and you know centuries before my country america was ever founded in in the version of it that we're here today. I mean, obviously there was people living here um, <laughs> yeah. with a culture that pretty much got wiped away. Mm-hmm. But our modern culture, um, 
So yeah, it just struck me of how like young of a country we are and how um, even our, if you get like the DC,